Good day, everyone. Meteorologist Mark Mulner here. Glad to have you here with me for this edition of Meteor Mark's Weather Tropical Edition in the middle of November. This is crazy. Here we are. We have two areas of interest. We have this big area of low pressure that's moving to the east-northeast across the Caribbean. We have our Gulf Coast low that could actually develop into this yellow zone here. So this is going to get really interesting. Let's just put it into motion here and see. Yeah, we could be looking at two systems, one across the Bahamas and one across Jamaica and eventually Haiti here. Could this sec uh, second system actually head up the U.S. East Coast, especially since we have a blocking high building in that may actually force these two systems westward? Let's get into it. So we're going to start off here with the European model. Just to let you know if you're into wintry weather, I have my winter 2023-24 outlook and a link in the description down below and also at the end of this video. So check that out. Let's take a look here. We have our big area here across the Caribbean. Let me just see a good vantage point here. So as we continue in time, this is going to look to get better organized. It'll probably become a depression or potentially a tropical storm uh, by the time it reaches uh, Jamaica here. So that is right around the 16th later on. 4 p.m., you see shower and thunderstorm activity really begins to increase here across Jamaica. You can see Kingston, Jamaica here. This system is looking pretty healthy by this point. And as we continue to go out in time, you can see there's that low pressure center right on the south shore of Jamaica as we get on 7 a.m. on the 17th. So lots of convection on the east end of this. Uh, pelting eastern Cuba as well. I think you're going to end up with a lot of heavy rains from Jamaica over to Cuba and eventually Haiti potentially becoming a flooding problem. However, the good news is it does start to accelerate a little bit. You can start to see our big area of high pressure uh, retreating out here across the North Atlantic. So what is exactly going to happen here with this second system? It is a race to see who becomes Tropical Storm Vince first or whether any of these will become tropical systems. I think it's a distinct possibility, but you can see that our lo coastal low here along the Gulf Coast here, this is the 15th. So as we continue to go out in time, you can see this pinwheels along the coast. Here's the 16th. What's actually happening here is it looks like the first low kind of heads out as a remnant low and it re uh, develops a secondary low just east of Miami here. This is on the 16th at 7 p.m. So what you're seeing here is redevelopment. And as we continue to go in time, you see the system really start to spin up here. Uh, just to the north side of the Bahamas by the 16th at 10 p.m. Now, here it is with relation to our southern system here. So right over Jamaica at this time, these two systems are going to be in close proximity to each other. So that means we could have some interaction going on and that's going to complicate things here. You see, it looks like both areas of low pressure start to elongate into this very large area of conglomeration. So What's going to happen here? You see this high pressure along the uh, way out here into the North Atlantic. You have another high building across the North American continent. And you see this right here. This is a frontal boundary. It is a weak frontal boundary, but it's going to be very, very crucial to see how fast that moves to the east. You can see it just slides just to the north here on the European model allowing our tropical systems to move up just near Cape Cod, just off Cape Cod by the 18th here at 1 p.m. And look at, you see Bermuda is right in the middle of this mess. This low pressure, this second one winds up across Nova Scotia. This far north this time of year, it's either extra tropical or it's literally a cold core system uh, at that point. So not looking at anything major tropical here, uh, but it could be fed by this system to the south here, whatever becomes of this as well. And as we continue to go out in time, you see that affects uh, Newfoundland up here as well. And then look at this by the 19th and heading on across the area. It looks to get quieter until we get another tropical wave by the 22nd here into the Central Caribbean. So things do remain pretty active. And look at this. We got a big tail end of a frontal boundary by the 23rd. You have to watch these areas. Uh, where you get the tail end of frontal boundaries heading in. You could get some spin-ups, and could we be looking at some sort of tropical system out here way out in the Central Atlantic by the 23rd? It is quite possible. All right, so here's our GFS model. Let's compare it to the European model that I just showed you and see what's going on here. Here's our first low-pressure system here across the Caribbean. You can see it's getting better organized. Here's Jamaica. 
So as we continue to head towards the 15th to 16th, so it's Wednesday and Thursday, you can see deep tropical moisture. Now it looks like the GFS is taking a little bit more of a southerly track. Here is the, here's the southern coast of Jamaica. Lots of tropical moisture heading up on the southeast side of the system. Still looking like Jamaica is the bullseye here of the heaviest rain. But you see towards, it is slower too. Look at this, the 17th at 7 p.m. There's the 18th at 10 a.m. It barely moves. So the steering currents are a bit weaker here on the GFS model. Heavy rain really starts to get into uh, Haiti by this point. It's pretty much void of Jamaica by this point. You start to see uh, some northwest winds take a effect here. So things might actually start to clear out for you here by later on in the 18th into the 19th. Now, what happened to our storm here on the GFS? Let's just back this up here. Look at this. So there's our area of low pressure. It really starts to get entrained into this uh, area of cold front. And it really gets entrained into it and zooms well up to the northeast here. Look at this. It's up by Newfoundland by the 20th. So let's just back this up, see what happens to our Gulf Coast low. This is quite a bit of different solution uh, than our European model. So here is our Gulf Coast low pressure system. That's going to be pinwheeling here across the eastern Gulf as we head throughout Wednesday. We'll be getting some very heavy rain uh, beginning to move into uh, the panhandle of Florida and eventually the entire Florida peninsula here uh, as we get throughout the day on Wednesday. So watch out for some very heavy rains here. Could be looking at three to six inches in some areas. Now look what happens here. You see that? The same thing happens on the European model. This first low kind of hangs back. This one's a little bit more to the north than it was on the European model. And a new low starts to form here uh, just east of Miami. So that is something to really keep an eye on because that is the trend on both models. Now you can see it really starts to get cranking in the northern parts of the uh, Bahamas here by uh, this actually is on Friday morning at 1 a.m. So lots of deep convection moisture. You see our our. Caribbean low is still down here by this point, potentially a tropical system. So watch what happens as I put this into motion here. Does it head up along the U.S. East Coast? Not quite. We still have high pressure blocking out here towards Bermuda, that big old Bermuda high. There is our westerly system here on the GFS. So there's our cold front. It's hanging way back. So what, what does this mean as far as timing? Well, let's see what the GFS does here as we head towards the weekend. Yeah, this is interesting because first this low pressure hangs back where it zooms up here on the European model. Look what starts to happen here uh, with our system. This looks more like a nor'easter. So by this point, it's either subtropical, extra tropical, most likely extra tropical. And we could be looking at a full fledged nor'easter here. Look at this 984 millibars here on the GFS model. And look how close it clips Cape Cod here up towards New Brunswick, Nova Scotia. This is something we got to keep an eye on because this cold front could help energize this system. Whatever this system is, it looks like it's packing a punch. 976 millibars here. So look at this. And whatever's left of our tropical system by this point is really booking it here towards the north, feeding into this mega low. So that's something really to keep a close eye on here. As we continue to go out here in time, that bombs up into the Canadian Maritimes, you can see. And whatever's left of this stalled front, we'll have to see whatever you know happens as this heads to the northeast. Now, you do start to see out of what's the energy that's left up here in the North Atlantic and Western Atlantic, look what starts to happen. We start to see a secondary low pressure develop. There's our next system coming off of coastal North America. Rainfall totals here across the Caribbean. Look at this. So as we head through Wednesday and Thursday here, we're piling up the rainfall. Yeah, that is Jamaica right there, especially eastern Jamaica. This is getting upwards of 175, 200, 225. This is getting a little bit. Uh, this is a lot, actually. So we're getting upwards of that 7 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 inches plus here. Eastern tip of Cuba, parts of Haiti as well. Definitely going to have to keep an eye on this. The Bahamas up here getting deluged as well. 
So as we get to the Eastern Caribbean, it does it look as bad as the Western Caribbean? No, it doesn't. But look at Trinidad, Tobago there by Friday. You're getting upwards of 35, 40 millimeters, you know, an inch and a half, two inches. Not too bad. Look at here, the Virgin Islands. If you're on vacation, it looks like there's almost no rain. That's great news for you. Even Puerto Rico, the southern uh, coastline here, you know, maybe 16 to as much as 25 millimeters, but nothing to really write home about here. So here as we get into the southeast, we'll zoom. Look at this. Yeah, this is a lot of rain here in such a short period of time. This takes us through early Saturday morning, late Friday night. Look at this. So parts of the panhandle of Florida, southern Alabama, you could get upwards of three, four, maybe as much as five inches of rain here. But look at South Florida. This area just north of Miami, you get upwards of 10 inches. This is a lot of rain, and it is plausible because this is about where the new area of low pressure will be forming. So the Western Pacific, what is going on here? Where our tropical depression 17 kind of fizzled out. It What's left of it is just east of the Philippines here. So we'll still need to keep an eye on it. It does bear watching, but it's going to be mostly just a big rainmaker here by the 18th. It does start to showers approach the central Philippines here. So that's something we'll need to keep an eye on here as we continue to head towards the weekend into the early part of next week. But you can see it just kind of fizzles here. It kind of starts stalling by the 19th. It doesn't look like it's in any danger of becoming a typhoon although you see look what's going on here we got a big tropical moisture feed heading on up into parts of the western pacific here towards the philippines we got another system out here that bears watching um this time of year it is hard to get development this far north but it is being blocked by this area of high pressure uh just east of japan here and by this point of the year you could almost say japan's you know, tropical season is starting to wind down here. As things start to get colder, you get more cold core systems. It is a view, very beautiful time of year, though. If you can visit Japan, the fall foliage is really taking root. And look at this. Yeah, this big area of low pressure starts to, uh, you know, head to the northeast here and fizzle out. Now, by this point, the 24th, look what's going on here. There's the northern Philippines. Look at our system here heading towards Vietnam. Here's coastal Vietnam. We'll have to watch. This low could be spinning up into something tropical. All right, here we go with the HRRR future radar. Let's see what's going on here. The big story is across the Gulf Coast states because look, at it is high pressure building in across much of the northeast. We only have a little bit of an area of snow here across Quebec. And our next system is actually coming in to the U.S. West Coast here. So here I have... Look what's going on here. This is an area of big time tropical downpours just pivoting across the Gulf Coast states. Let me actually get it out of precipitation mode and into composite mode here. So you can actually see some of these gully washers unfold here. So we're going to head throughout the night, Tuesday night. Look at just south of New Orleans. You're cranking out some rainfall totals here across southeast Louisiana. And look at that. Yeah, you could be cranking out one to two inches an hour here as we head through the overnight into the early morning hours of Wednesday. That's looking like a lot of deep tropical moisture. And that starts to target. This is 7 a.m. Wednesday morning. Look what starts to happen here across the, the, the Gulf. This is actually the first low. So don't be don't be distracted by this low because this is going to head uh, energy here to the east and start to develop a new low uh, just east of Miami. Now, let's see if we can actually continue to pivot throughout the day, 4 p.m., 5 p.m. So the panhandle of Florida and even south Florida. Now, do you start to see this little circulation here just south of the Keys? It's already starting to show up by uh, midnight on Wednesday night. That is our area of second low pressure starting to form here. This one is going to hang back and kind of hang out over the north central Gulf. But you can see this is what starts to happen. Low pressure right just east of Miami uh, by 10 a.m. on Thursday morning, the 16th. And look at that heavy rain across parts of the Bahamas. We'll be looking at torrential rain continuing as we go out in time here. So the forecast for North America here, this includes Canada and the United States. Let's take a look as we just cruise a long time here. You can see high pressure is really dominant. The only driving force is this mega low here uh, just south of Hudson Bay as we get later on in the week. There's a trailing cold front here. You can see it. Uh, but look at this. Pretty quiet out here across the western part of North America. So this is the 17th, by the way. So as we get towards the end of the week here, Friday, you can see that frontal boundary really start to push. Let me just zoom in here 
Uh, this is 10 a.m. on uh, Friday here. So here across southern Michigan, parts of Indiana, Ohio, you're going to start to see some showers increasing here across these regions. And you can see that frontal boundary is pushing through throughout the day. Cleveland, Ohio by 4 p.m., Buffalo as well, Syracuse by 7 uh, p.m. And then look at here as we head to the early morning hours of Saturday, you see this tropical What's, what's going on with this tropical system looks to combine forces with this uh, area of cold front and low pressure system uh, across the coastline. So we will be watching this here in eastern New England. The potential for at this point, it would either be subtropical or well extra tropical or a cold core system. So definitely something to keep an eye on here. But look at this. The weather is really quiet until you get out here uh, towards the west coast uh, the Pacific Northwest, and then into Western Canada, where we got our next system plowing in from the west. Canadian Maritimes in the east there. Look at that. That low pressure system, the second low. I call it the second low because it's the one that's probably going to get going uh, behind our Caribbean low, but it could end up being coming the primary low. Here's our, our primary low. By this point, we'll have to see, you know, what the relation is between these two, but uh, there could be some energy transfers going on here. And look at this, by the 19th, our next system is really starting to take shape, a, co a classic Colorado low. Will that be ejecting out into the plains and eventually the Great Lakes as we head out into Thanksgiving week? It does look that way. And to the north of it, we could be looking at an area of wintry precipitation that we may need to keep our eyes on here uh, across the area. I'll show you the GFS momentarily that really gets into the precipitation types. But you can see this low pressure system. Wherever this low does occur or move, you can see just to the south of it, it'll be rain. To the north, we could be looking at wintry conditions. This is by the 21st, so this is a two days before Thanksgiving, actually. And look at that. That pushes up towards Ontario and Quebec. There's some convection. There is a line of convection that moves along the East Coast by the 22nd. So if you have travel plans just before Thanksgiving, that could actually be a problem. And then look at Canada here. It's mostly dry for the most part, except in the northern Quebec province here. And then look at here into the plains. We got our next area of low pressure. So here we go with the GFS model. You can see what's going on here. Well, if we just back this up here all the way back to the beginning, you know, past where we had the mesoscale model. You can see as we continue to go out here in time, there's our area off the U.S. East Coast that bears watching, but here we're in precipitation mode. So here's our system approaching from the west on Friday. You can see it is going to bring that line of showers and thunder showers in some areas uh, towards the 17th at 10 a.m. There will be an area of snow just behind it uh, across Ontario and Quebec here as we head through Friday morning. But look what's going on here. Showers moving through Cleveland, Buffalo, throughout the day and that heads eastward here towards evening hours here along eastern pennsylvania upstate new york vermont and then all the way up here into the canadian maritimes where it's, we're going to actually see some snow start to mix in here behind that you can see it is quiet except for the west coast here our next system trying to move in but look what's going on here this system is going to plow to the east we could see that combine forces and become one big giant what looks like actually a comma shaped nor'easter here that's that's actually a perfect comma here bombing out along the u.s east coast now let's just continue to go in time here do we have any prospects of snow well behind that we get a little bit of a lake effect response here you knew that was coming that always happens behind these big nor'easters now look what's happening the 21st this the gfs is taking this system a little bit further to the south here uh let's actually there we go i got our isobars on there areas of high and low pressure that is better so we can actually see these low pressure tracks here on our gfs model so here we go we're going to continue to go out here in time so there's our system there's our area it's it's not really showing up as a, as a massive low pressure so this is more of a of a strung out, drawn out area of low pressure here. You can see this is by the 21st. So this is just two days before Thanksgiving here. You can see snow moving out across parts of the Ohio Valley here into the Eastern Great Lakes. And look at this, an area of heavy snow into Eastern Ohio, Western Pennsylvania. If there's any travel plans, if this model does hold true, little skeptical of it, especially the GFS this far out. But look at this, if this holds true, you know, we have this high pressure system just to the north over eastern Canada. That could be enough to supply this cold air uh, 
that's undercutting our southern stream system here. So this is almost looking like classic El Nino here. It's kind of kind of interesting here at the 22nd, the day before Thanksgiving, you see snow moving up into parts of the northeast here in New England, pivoting, and then an area of low pressure uh, moving up along the coastline here. So the GFS is more wintry and colder and more south and then you get the lake effect response behind it for Thanksgiving Day, looking a little bit blusterier and windy. Look at that. That's a big lake effect band heading across what looks like could be three great lakes because this storm really starts to bomb here up across the Canadian Maritimes. And that pulls down that colder air response across the lakes. Now, look what's happening out west here. We got our next system really blasting inward here. And that's actually going to head across the country. There it is across the plains. And it pushes another area of low pressure here towards the 25th you know a couple days after thanksgiving here this is getting pretty far out though i just caution you 270 hours out this one actually heads a little bit further to the north than the previous low pressure but a similar response here and don't go anywhere i have plenty more weather in just a moment but check out my affiliate here here are some awesome maps i am proud to announce that i am now an affiliate with trilogy maps trilogymaps.com bringing you the most digital customizable maps found nowhere else on the internet these maps are simply stunning it's advanced layering system that makes these maps great for making forecast maps with ease or any other maps that you would like to display important information on the resolution on these maps is simply amazing from the detail of everything here in the states and you can also create stunning digital professional layered maps from also across the entire world and don't forget in checkout the discount code option use my code mediamark hit apply and you will get 20 percent off your order so if you want the most professional, customizable, and affordable weather maps found nowhere else on the internet, look no further than TrilogyMaps.com. Link in the description down below along with your discount code. So here we go with our CFS medium range climate model. Look what's going on here across eastern North America. Lots of ridging through the end of the week, but look at that as we head through the Thanksgiving week, we get a big fast moving flow here. And this actually results in a trough here across much of the southeast part of the U.S. And look at that ridging out west. That's replaced by a trough and then another ridge here towards thanks, you know, just after Thanksgiving. So there it is. There's Thanksgiving Day. Troughiness could come together for some sort of system. We'll have to take a look and see. Keep an eye on that. But the trend here, that's what we're looking for, is a lot of ridging through the end of the month here in November. Here as we get into the first week of December, we start to get evidence that that pattern is really going to start to change. We start to see this big trough developing here across eastern North America. And look at this. This is relentless. So December looks like a complete turnaround that is tremendous there. Look at that. That's December 16th. So that's something we'll have to keep a very close eye on. So let's take a look at liquid precipitation totals here across the country, even into southern Canada up here. Look at that. That stays well north into Canada. You got a generalized, you know, rainfall, snowfall mix here across Ontario and Quebec. But look at here along the Gulf Coast. This is where you could see some rainfall totals upwards. This is the European model, by the way. Upwards close to four, five, maybe six inches. South Florida, you could easily get up into the six to eight inch range. Here's the California coast. Looks like the heaviest stays just offshore here. But here in the Ohio Valley and the parts of the Northeast, this is where you're going to get upwards of about a quarter to a, maybe a third, half an inch in some areas. Now, as we get into the Northeast here, let's take a look. Wednesday and Thursday looks nice and clear from the Ohio Valley to the Northeast. Look what's coming though. This is early, or this is later Friday, I should say. So this is just afternoon. Things get cranking here across Cleveland, uh, Columbus, up to Buffalo, Erie, Pennsylvania, Dunkirk. Look what's going on here. So yeah, a lot of this is falling. You know, the heaviest of this is falling Friday evening across parts of western New York, western Pennsylvania, eastern, eastern and northeastern Ohio here. Parts of, you know, the average here is about a quarter to a half an inch on average. So as we take a look at your temperatures here, take a look at this. So we get into Wednesday. This is a big area of warmth here. Look at those 60s from the Ohio Valley all the way to the Plains as well as 70s, even 50s up here and 40s into northern New England. As we get into Thursday, that warmth spreads eastward here. 
Look at these 60s across much of the Great Lakes. That is crazy with a big area of 70s likely. A little bit of colder air spilling down here across the northern plains. But look at this as we head into the Friday. That warms up as we get another response. Another low pressure trying to form here out towards Colorado. Now look at here across the east. That warm 60 plus degree weather is bubbling up here. But watch the weekend. Yeah, that cold front blasts through with some 40s for highs here. And look at this across Texas. We're continuing to warm things up here into the 70s. Very nice continuing through the rest of your week here. But look at that. We start to get into Saturday and a reinforcing shot of cooler air. 40s continuing up here. Look at this area of 60s and 70s across parts of the Deep South. And as we get into your Sunday here, look at this. Not too bad except in northern New England. That's seasonably cold for this time of year, though. You know, 40s and some upper 30s, uh, 40s here into the Ohio Valley. And then look at this, starting to cool down across parts of the south, dropping down into the 60s. Extended outlook from hometown viewers, Bingham to Grand, Upper Susquehanna, River Valley of New York and Pennsylvania. Look at this, starting off really nice, almost spring-like sunny. Wednesday and Thursday up towards 61 on Thursday. Those are some cold overnight lows, though, down to 20. But look at that, Friday, we approach the next system with a chance of shadow. Hours potentially here heading up towards 60. The cold front comes through Friday night into Saturday with some more showers, maybe up to two tenths of an inch. And then look at that Saturday and Sunday, colder, more seasonable chance of scattered showers, but sunny skies as well. Thanks for joining me for this edition of Media Marks Weather. Don't forget my winter 2023-24 outlook is in a link in the description down below, also appearing right in front of you on the screen as well. So check that out. Facebook Media Mark. Twitter at Weather Eastern, also Facebook Weather Northeastern and Hurricane Northeastern. Thanks for joining me. And don't forget, check out my affiliate link at Trilogy Maps below.